So your question to me was separation anxiety. You said that the dog has separation anxiety. Now I said to you that separation anxiety is a term that's been created uh, by the health industry for a couple of reasons. If you say that a dog has separation anxiety, it creates an emotion. That emotion is sympathy. Okay? We feel sorry for a dog who's distressed, who, who can't bear to be without us. We're so important, we're so loving and such good people that our dog can't bear to be without us. Now if we look at the, the average dog in that uh, classification of separation anxiety, we see that the dog is in a loving home and the dog has learned how to control its environment and how to rise up to be a leader. So then the behavior that we're seeing is uh, an acting out, a demanding, uh, selfish, it's all about me kind of attitude. And so when you leave, it's not that the dog can't bear to be without you because you're so amazing. Not that you're not amazing people, right? But it's about the fact that the dog has learned to get what it wants and to demand what it, it wants. So when we leave the dog, the dog acts out and it tears the house up and acts like this. Now, if we turn around, we relabel that dog and we say, well, if we look at it in the other behaviors that we see with the dog, that the dog is actually a disobedient dog in certain ways. Maybe he's not all the time. You might think, oh no, he's a pretty good dog. But you, there's, if we put a certain level, a standard of behavior, and we say, well, he's not matching up to that standard of behavior, he's not fully obedient. So he's actually becoming, if we look at him and we say he's stubborn, he's, he's belligerent, he's arrogant. Well, then you don't feel so sorry for him. Well, I don't want that in my house. If you, if you had a, you, you know, your brother-in-law comes over and he's gonna stay and he's belligerent and arrogant and selfish. Well, how, when's he leaving, all right? But, but if you said, oh, he's got problems, he's got issues, everybody feels sorry for the brother-in-law, no, he can stay, he can mooch off us or whatever. We change the label and we start to change the way we deal with the problem. It empowers you when he suddenly, you realize, hey, he's just arrogant and stubborn, you know, and, and demanding. So you then can bring in discipline into his life because you don't feel guilty about it. And so instead of putting him on drugs, which again is where these labels are coming from, you know, the drug company makes it a, a drug to, to help you with this separation anxiety. Your emotions are into place, so you're going to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars to keep your dog calm and happy. Whereas 15 minutes of proper, firm physical discipline according to the personality of the dog you're dealing with, suddenly he's respecting you. Suddenly his whole behavior changes. You can then leave him in the house. Within a half an hour, you could leave the average separation anxiety dog in the house, say, stay, I'm leaving and drive out of there and the dog's gonna be relaxed because he recognizes he doesn't run the show anymore. He's not the king top banana anymore. And so the problem is solved, no drugs, no time, no stress. And it's less stressful to the dog. Not that he was anxious stressed, he's angry, dominant stressed, all right? It's no fun. So in a few minutes, separation anxiety can be taken out of the dog's behavior. Everybody can be at more peace.